Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today's topic um, is fall migration. And I know it's so, you know, for us, to when we think fall, we think of cold, crisp Friday night football games or, uh, you know, those leaves turning and or Halloween's coming close and, and all that. Those, those are what we think of as fall. For birds, no. That doesn't mean, uh, for fall to them is I've, nested i have got to get south where i can have dependable food all winter and things change in their world dramatically um, a lot of our birds that come through in spring migration it come through in a very narrow window of time they they're on their way they're in a hurry to get to their nesting sites or get that first brood of babies done and sometimes that's all they get like if you nest at the top of the world like a lot of the shorebirds and waterfowl and some songbirds and raptors they only have a narrow window where the weather is good enough for them to be able to uh, get a nest in. And for many of those birds, if they are not successful in finding a mate, or if they have started a nest and a predator uh, gets to the nest, they don't have time to make a second nest. And a lot of those birds start their fall migration in mid-July. And so we'll see shorebirds show up in mid-July, and we'll see stragglers of almost any species can show up really early, and that's fall migration to them. Um, the fall migration is spread out so much more. For bird watchers, it's a little harder. You know, we look forward to that two and a half, three week window in spring whenever the, the songbirds are just moving through here and we get a chance to see them. In the fall, they're moving south at a much slower more gradual pace like i said the ones the, the early ones probably didn't successfully nest the ones who did nest are uh, leave as soon as they can afterwards because it starts to get cold and conditions that deteriorate like quick rather quickly up at the top of the world and so they start moving south so things like uh, waterfowl you know they may stay a little longer because until the water freezes over they have a little extra time before they leave to come south uh, shorebirds uh, the very variant, you know, the, the, the amount of food available to them, the amount of shallow water available to them will freeze quicker than deeper water, so they may leave a little earlier. Songbirds, they have, they're almost all so insect dependent that is, they have to leave fairly quickly. And so the, the, the fall migration is spread. And so when we're out bird watching, and by the way, our fall uh, Thursday morning hikes and our uh, Sundays at Smithville, are up on the website, uh, com slash calendar. And one day I'll be able to figure out how to put that on these videos. Um, but they, uh, they're up when they, the schedule's up. But we'll be looking for, you know, those fall markets. And I try to arrange those hikes so that when shorebirds are coming through and then when songbirds are coming through and then waterfowl coming through, kind of that spread out very fall uh, through the fall uh, schedule. So a lot of that's going on now. So for you to be looking in your backyard, we want you to be looking for anything that you, you're, uh, you're not familiar with. And this gets complicated because a lot of birds will molt into a winter plumage uh, and they're not as bright and as showy as they are in the spring. Think of our American goldfinches. You know, our goldfinches are really, the males are bright yellow and black, but they're getting, they're started their fall molting process now. Now they'll stick around and we'll even get migrants that winter here uh, over the winter, but they'll be much duller because it's a safer you know, plumage to be in in the fall and this winter. So, and, and that's going to happen with a lot of birds. And remember, a lot of the birds that are passing through are the ones that hatched this year. So juvenile birds' plumages are very different than uh, than the adult males, which we look forward to seeing that, that pretty uh, plumage of theirs. Well, in the fall, we're seeing a lot of females that, and, and young that look like females, and that can be very confusing. So just be on the lookout for birds you don't recognize. And a lot of these birds that are passing through here are insectivores. So putting out bird seed for them is probably not going to benefit a whole lot of the fall migrants. But the two things that you can, uh, can do, number one by far, is water. 
water is the hardest thing for birds to find. They don't know when they when they're migrating and they get to an area, a new area, they don't know where food sources are, water sources are, but there all should be insects around for them to eat. But water can be very hard for them to find. Now this year has been a quasi wet summer. We haven't had a not like last summer where we had so much water. So the harder water is for them to find, the more your bird baths are our water features are important to them. That's why I'm standing over here because not only is water important, but moving water is very important. This is a bubbler. It has an aquarium pump that comes with it. And you put that in your bird bath. And this circulates the water and it cascades down over the rock. And it makes that gurgling sound and bubbling sound. And for migrating birds that are searching for a water source, that is like a magnet to them. So they come and find that. And the other, of course, are misters. And then misters can be a real simple device like this one that you just put on the end of your water hose and let it spray a fine spray out into your landscaping and the birds love to fly through that or they like to get the they like to get uh, underneath it and, and hummingbirds love flying through the mist but all other birds they'll sit there and just let it spray on them and, it, and, and that source of water is so important to them it's, and like i said especially in migration now i mentioned that they're all most of these birds are going to be insectivores and so they're you know, the one thing that may help um, is mealworms you can try to put out mealworms in a dish and the old trick of putting a drop or two of olive oil on them and spreading around on the dead ones so that they look like they're moving and you might benefit some of the migrating birds coming through here with that but water is by far number one so definitely make sure you have a, a, a fall water source for them so fall migration it happens every year it is spread out but remember it's starting now i mean we talked to the, the hummingbirds are already starting to build a number we peak in hummingbird numbers the last week of august the first week of september so be on the watch out if you don't have your hummingbird feeder out make sure you get it out orioles. oh and oriole numbers we got a lot of questions about orioles about oh all of a sudden i have orioles again remember those are probably birds from Minnesota, southern Canada, that, that they're through with their nesting cycle and they're pushing through now. Our, our Orioles left mainly in July and, and maybe the first week of August, but it's been a while since a lot of you have seen the Orioles, but they're hitting the jelly fast now, so make sure you got that out for those fall migrants coming through here. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, great idea for a program. Please send in more. We get lots of questions and we try to, you know, we want to, you know, do topics that you're interested in. So Give us a like, give us a share. That really helps us out. And until then, come on, let's talk birds. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.